Hey Noble Ones, what a pleasure to see you here. Just before we start, if you like my work, please check out my Patreon page. I offer extra content there, and for the highest tiers, there is also the possibility to have a Skype lesson with me about either linguistics or history or whatever you want really. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now let's get to the video. Whenever we hear the words plate armor, we immediately imagine the sort of combat harness worn by medieval mounted nobility. So is plate armor a medieval invention? Say this breastplate, for instance, is made of a solid piece of each sheet at 1.5mm steel, and it is based on the Cherbourg Finding, a late 14th century medieval piece of kit, used by knights and men at arms alike. But if we look at the high medieval knight, then we see a warrior completely clad in mail, a type of armour formed of a mesh of interlocking metal rings. As we move from the high middle ages to the late middle ages, plates start to be added more and more, until we have the appearance of the sophisticated suits of full plate armour of the late 15th and 16th century. So when looking at history like that, it might appear as if at the beginning of the Middle Ages, mail was the available technology. But as metallurgy gets better, plate is discovered, it starts to be added until we reach the peak of plate armour, the zenith, if you will, exemplified by the northern Italian and southern German styles, among others. And yet, through this video, I'd like to introduce an alternative view. The concept of plate armour, the technology, was not medieval. It came back in the Middle Ages, it was perfected in the Middle Ages, but the idea of covering a warrior in full metal plates was a much more ancient invention. But how ancient? To find the origins of this, we must look back to the Iron Age. In the Iron Age, the Romans were already quite well acquainted with the concept of plate. Iron and steel plates were cut into girth hoops and then fashioned into circular bands, very different from the rings the Lorica Hamata was made of. So the Romans knew how to make plates. In the case of Segmentata, as we compare it to a late medieval breastplate, we see they chose to cut these plates into segments. They chose to make it segmented. The reason for such choice is mass production. Remember, this is a state fund army. It was easier for the smiths to cut the plates in many different bands of various sizes, which would then be used to fit each soldier individually. But to get even closer to the idea of a full torso armour made of a single plate, we needn't look any further than Lorica Musculata, the muscle cuirass. Musculata was mostly used by officers, generals and emperors because it was a lot more expensive to make. It consisted of a sometimes very ornamented and atomically shaped cuirass made of metal, inspired by Greek originals. Greece is in fact where I believe this whole idea of producing metal plate corsets originated from. Let's hop back again, this time all the way to the Bronze Age. This is where the first entire suits of beaten bronze plate were created. I'm talking about the Dendra panoply from the Argolid. Earlier Gianama was made a plate with a thickness ranging from 0.7 to 1.5 mm. In the case of the Dendra panoply we're dealing with a 1.5 mm copper alloy plate with a 10 to 12% tin ratio. So we are in the lower end of the hardness scale achievable with bronze, but still able to provide adequate protection from the weapons of the time. Also, the entire suit of armour weighed less than 15 kilograms. We knew suits of armour existed through their depiction as ideograms in a linear B script using the Aegean and Crete from the 14th century onwards. These depictions occurred on tablets from the palaces at Knossos. But it is the discovery of a complete corset in tomb 12 in the 1960s that provided the evidence, dated to circa 1400 BC. This was the final evidence of what was apparent in linear B records. It's fascinating. Look how reminiscent, how similar these pauldrons, for instance, look to the late 15th century Italian-style pauldrons. This armour was made 3000 years before the creation of late 15th century knightly armour and yet, although it is a lot more crude and primitive, it does share a lot of similar fundamentals. The reason why this is relevant is because human prehistory as a definition is the period between the use of the first stone tools 3.3 million years ago by hominids and the invention of writing. So the moment a population discovers writing, it's not considered prehistorical anymore. On the other hand, by definition, a population which still does not use a true form of writing is considered prehistorical. I'd like to propose the idea that plate armour was a prehistoric invention. Not medieval, not classical, prehistorical. So how do I back that up? The Stone Age was a broad prehistoric period during which stone was widely used to make implements. The period lasted roughly 3.4 million years and ended with the advent of metal working. Hence, we know for sure plate armour cannot be a Stone Age invention because there was no metal working. The suits of armour we have just analysed belong to the early Bronze Age, 
and we know that by that time Greek civilization had already invented writing. Not everyone knows, however, that an intermediary period between the end of the Stone Age, so the Neolithic when agriculture was invented, and the beginning of the Bronze Age existed, the Chalcolithic, the Copper Age, Chalkos meaning copper in Greek. This period was characterized by the invention of metalworking, copper being the only metal used. Copper Age civilization still hadn't discovered that adding tin would make copper harder and therefore more suitable for combat. The moment they find that out, they become Bronze Age civilizations. My opinion is that Bronze Age weapons and armor were an advanced version of preceding copper plate armor and weapons. Plate armor was most likely a Copper Age invention, coming along with the discovery of metalworking, and since by that time in this area writing wasn't still a thing, Plate armor is prehistorical. If you think about it, weapons are probably one of the first discoveries of mankind, the designing of tools for hurting and overpowering the local fauna and other humans. And great discoveries such as that of fire weren't only used to protect your tribe from the elements or to help with cooking, but most likely had military applications right at their birth. We are, and always have been, a combat-oriented species. Fire had a major impact on the innovation of tool and weapon manufacturing. At a dig site located in Germany, a fire-hardened lance was found thrust into the ribcage of a straight-tusked elephant. We have evidence that suggests that spears were deliberately fire-hardened, which allowed early humans the ability to modify their hunting tactics and use the spears as thrusting rather than throwing weapons only. Learning how to read and write is definitely a very important discovery which makes life easier, more sophisticated, but to reap the rewards of this discovery there has to be life in the first place, and therefore I think it's only logical to assume body armor preceded writing as an invention, because protection from physical harm is a much more impending need than anything intellectual. First save the brain, then let it expand. How difficult would it be for a civilization that was already able to produce weapons of copper, whether it be spears, axes and swords, to understand that they could utilize that very same metal to protect themselves from those weapons? How much of a leap would it really be for a civilization already able to produce jewelry that was partially covering the body to understand that they just needed to make them thicker and cover more of the body so that those plates could protect their leaders, their kings. Now, particularly in Europe, this continuous race between the development of weapons and armor has been juxtaposed and interlocked. The more advanced the new weapon would become, the more advanced the armor to protect you from those weapons. And therefore, I believe that this race began in the Stone Age. And when metal was thrown into the equation, plates of metal started to be developed and as we stride across the centuries copper bronze iron steel and titanium will be the main players of one of the most constant inventions in the history of mankind plate armor
Alright noble ones, well I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did please remember thumbs up and if you're still yet not a member of this community become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.